is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. And it doesn't matter where me or you are, although I'm in the free state of Florida, uh, in the Tampa area, on what is just about a perfect day uh, that's going to turn into the first tropical storm this week of the season. Uh, it is hurricane season, but uh, again... As long, all with all that, all that matters is that you're here at the appointed time. Ah! And something broke. Ah. Ooh, there it is. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. We'll get it going. 877-927-6648. Uh, Email me at path at tfnn.com. We have uh, Tim Ord on uh, at the... Uh, next break if you have any uh, charts you want him to look at email me early and i will forward them to him path at tfnn.com so we got a few things going on uh s and p's up 56 at the present time this is the last day of fund buying uh generally you're going to have uh, a, a pretty much a half a percent on average uh pullback Probably tomorrow, probably slightly after the open. Now, does that mean that'll happen tomorrow? No, but on average, you you generally have uh, the markup phase and then a pullback. Um, I don't see anything out here that is extremely bearish, but at the same time, I don't see much in the way of anything that's really bullish. Uh, we could have these uh, up 1%, down 1%, up 1% chops, uh, until we figure out uh, which way the market and winds are blowing. On the 31st, we got to uh, 41.68. It looks to me like that is the test uh, that we're getting ready uh, for today on the S&P. It's only another 10 points higher. Maybe that comes tomorrow. Um, what I would say, though, is uh, as we didn't have a volume um, at the lows, uh, we don't have volume at the highs as we go in uh, with, uh, what, uh, about an hour and 52 minutes left in the trading day. We only have about 6.6 .6 billion shares. That's not enough to really get anything going. Uh, again, we're, we are going into um, summer trading and volume will decrease. Uh, as I said, uh, long before we got to um, the Memorial Day three-day weekend, it's very tough to be short a market with declining volume. That volume has to decline for a while. Um, I also have uh, said that I get a lot of email from folks that are telling me the end is nigh. That has not stopped. Um, I keep on uh, sending them the memes back about uh, quit drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, there'll be a signal. But uh, yelling and screaming that the market's going lower every day doesn't do much for me or anybody else uh, but uh, it is kind of a sign of those folks that are rabid foaming at the mouth uh, either long or short um, markets go higher markets go lower you shouldn't be so invested with one side if you're a trader if you're a short seller I think what you do is you go short and then you just uh, go to the top of a mountain and uh, Make sure you don't have any radios or internet or anything else and come down maybe in a year and check it and see what happens. It is extremely painful uh, to uh, always uh, think that the market's going lower. It, uh, through One of the things that you can find um, on the internet is a lot of work by uh, college institutions, PhDs, uh, on statistics for the market because the data is so easily available and provable uh, for theses and other things. Uh, but uh, one of the things they come out with, and it depends on which study you get or which white paper, 
But the market's going up, maybe not a whole lot, but it's going up three-fourths of the time, maybe 70% of the time in a bear market. Uh, and most people that haven't been in a bear market or think that they were in a bear market may have forgotten that the market tends to go higher, even just a little. And then you get these one-week moves of extreme uh, depression. Uh, they burn themselves out, and then you kind of go higher for a while. You make these ABCs. But the, that uh, B to C leg can be very long. And as Warren Buffett says, uh, the market is very good at transferring money from the patient to the or from the impatient to the patient. And if you are going to be bearish, maybe the best thing uh, is uh, to uh, just know that uh, if you want to be bearish, you probably only want to be in the market about 25% of the time. And yelling and screaming to me as the market goes nothing but higher. In fact, I've had one guy uh, tell me that the market was going to hell in a handbasket for the last 300 points higher. Um, it doesn't do you any good. You, you end up, uh, I know for me, you're not always going to be right. But I don't want to be kind of a Gene Dixon making a billion predictions only to have one right and then uh, yell and scream and say, I'm a great trader. I don't see a lot right now, either to the upside or the downside. And no position is a position. If you want to trade the chop, that's fine. But uh, as I said, I don't think there's anything more than a 24-hour trade and probably more like an interday trade until we break out of this range. Maybe we get a signal. Certainly, you're not going to get uh, a signal today with volume unless something drastically changes. But that's uh, kind of it. 877-927-6648. Uh, Email me with questions for uh, Tim, uh, who will be on shortly. And uh, see what else we have going on out here. Um, question about Microsoft and USO. We'll talk about that. Um, I did Microsoft for one of the other folks that emails me. Um, certainly looks like 270 is the close for tomorrow um, from options. Uh, we're a little higher than that. So maybe we get, as I said, generally after fund buying, you look for a little bit of weakness. I think we're going to continue to see maybe a little selling uh, into um, the closes on Fridays as people want to get out of risk. So I don't, again, I don't see a lot of upside and I don't see a lot of downside for here. Uh, we'll talk to Tim about or uh, about uh, crude because we've got a couple of questions for that. Um, but uh, he's got a bunch of charts already prepared, and we'll go into those uh, right after he gets back on after the break. But uh, that's kind of it. Um, if you have others, uh, let me know, and I will uh, forward them to him. We'll talk about it later in the show. Um, but that's about it. Um, let's see if anybody else has an uh, uh, and Yep, that's pretty much it. We'll be back uh, in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we return, we want to welcome to the microphones. Once again, Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Tim has uh, had uh, a newsletter for 30 years now and uh, made several very big long-term calls over the years. Uh, probably most well-known around TFNN for his uh, gold calls around 2000 and uh, winning a number of uh, Timer of the Year awards. Hello? How are you doing today, Tim? Are you there? Hello? We got anything? Bueller? Bueller? We lose the phone? I can't hear anything um, on that side. Well, Tim, um, I can't hear you. Hopefully you can hear me. If you want to... Uh, Nope, that's it. It sounds like a busy signal to me. Maybe you'll call back. Uh, let's go back to some of the other stuff uh, while we wait. Uh, yep, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah they had I, they, they put the wrong button or something. They put uh, me in that's Bolivian not, somewhere. Not, <laughs> not so. unsurprising for those folks. They were having too uh, much of a time uh, party time there. Anyway, uh, yeah. did you hear my introduction? Uh, no, I missed that. So I, I okay. was on, didn't hear anything. So I called back, and so okay. at least I'm, I'm well. Back I on, wanted to no, say just so you know what I said. I said Tim Ward is probably best known around TFNN for his gold calls around 2000. He's had a newsletter for over 30 years and won many Timer of the Year awards in different uh, in different uh, products. Uh, but uh, okay. welcome back to the microphones today. Right, right. Um, well, we got a several charts to talk about. Uh, we can talk about something else, or we can talk about the charts. What do you want to do? Um, well, as much as I want to uh, talk uh, about nothing about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, I think probably okay. the markets are probably the best thing to do. Let me uh, pull that up. We've got chart one here. 
All right. So let's go um, right to that. Well, you know, the, the bottom window is the uh, four-day average of the advanced decline line. And I kind of just put the four-day because it wasn't quite a week. And, and so, anyhow, it really, when it pops out, in other words, you really have to have four days of really a, a strong advanced decline line to really pop that uh, indicator up. And and what you notice there, you know, that, that popped up back to the March of 220,000 low where, you know, where we had the, um, you know, the virus outbreak, the market tanked. And right after that, you got a bunch of uh, strength off that bottom. And that's really a good sign uh, to have to really confirm that the market uh, has reversed back to up. Uh, so every time you got greater than four, in other words, 400, basically four to one advanced decline on average over a four-day period is very rare since the last time that happened was, you know, over two years ago. And uh, so, you know, it, when we came off that low uh, of last week, it, it really signaled a pretty strong move up. And the top window is the NYC McCollin Oscillator, and uh, it got below for 200 and then it got above 300. And it's pretty rare for that to happen. Get above last Friday was 351, and uh, yesterday it closed at 260. But the point is, it went from basically minus 200 to plus 300 in you know about a week, week and a half. And the last time that happened was also coming off that March low. So I identified the times when the uh, 4D average of the advanced decline was above four, and also when the McCollin Oscillator hit above 300. And so that's really a sign of strength off that low, and everybody in the whole world bearish here. Uh, I, I publish my, or I, uh, they post my market letter every uh, uh, Wednesday on stock charts. And usually when I get hate mail, which I did this time around, it's a really good <laughs> sign that I'm probably right on this call because I'm actually long uh, the uh, S&Ps here got long last Friday but uh, it's a really a strong signal off of the bottom and, and so far if, if even from stock charts investors who are pretty a lot of them are savvy investors don't believe that call is right so um, anyhow I think an important low was made here last week or the week exact low was uh, probably a couple of weeks ago but there is a important low here and we do have a sign of strength off of the bottom and that's kind of a lot of times initiation of an up move not saying every day is going to be an up day but we've been consolidating since last friday and um we're up today you know testing the previous highs of friday i guess right now but uh, to me I, I think we're going to move higher um so uh, we got some other indicators too if you want to Jump to indicator number two. The bull bear? Yeah, the bull bear ratio. And that kind of determines um, right now, or let's see, yeah, we're still at 0.37, and that's the bull bear ratio. Then went back uh, to uh, 2007, identified the times when the bull bear ratio was below 0.40. Uh, normally, you get bottoms around 0.75, uh, decent bottoms, but this one went way low. And so I d identified the times, and again, it happened uh, back once in 2019, and also back at the uh, uh, March of 2020, uh, it's kind of that blue area there. It got down there and stayed down there, and that's usually a bullish sign. And even this is charts updated up to yesterday. Uh, so it's still there, um, but uh, it didn't really work that well. It Back in 2008, it got down below uh, 0.04 a couple of times. They were short-term bottoms, and the market did bounce, but ultimately you did go lower. But it still identified least short-term bounces. Since uh, after the 2007 and seven high and, and during that decline uh, in 2009 bottom, after that, it pretty much uh, picked out the major lows going forward. And sometimes it even happened in uptrends 
uh, you'll get a, nobody waving a rally and everybody's bailing out for whatever reason. And the market continued higher if this race was down below 0.40. Uh, so that's a sentiment indicator. In other words, that measures the American Association of Individual Investors, what they think about the market. And, uh, and according to them, you know, they're all bearish. So, which is a good sign. So, uh, so I'm thinking something unusually happened here. We got inflation, you know, we got gas prices through the roof. We got a lot of things wrong, but the market seems to know in advance what, what is coming. So I think something, evidently something important is coming. So we'll be back in a minute with uh, Tim or to the or dash Oracle. If you want any of the charts, email me at path at tfnn.com and we'll send them to you. Be back in a second. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return from the break, uh, we're pretty uh, close to retesting the 4168 high from um, May 31st. So we'll see. Kind of been sideways action. Volume a little, uh, well, certainly lighter than the 31st, but uh, is a little bit lighter. We've got uh, Tim Ord on the line. Tim uh, from the Ord-Oracle.com has had a newsletter for over 30 years. Makes you feel young, doesn't it? <laughs> um I got that. He sent an email, and the uh, somebody was inquiring about oil. Yeah, and uh, I got that crude oil chart up. It's on a monthly chart going back to like nineteen eighty-five or thereabouts. Anyhow, um, 
the whole thing looks like a trading range here. I mean, it's, it's basically you had a high in 2000. Uh, you had a, um, um, a down thrust, I guess you might say, below in, two, in 2020. Couldn't hold that. So if you can't hold the previous lows, you're trying to take out the previous highs. Well, the previous highs on uh, crude is around 140. Uh, so in my opinion, that's probably an upside target. But, um, you know, it's uh, RSI right now is uh, is almost 74 on the monthly time frame. Seems like you know, oils can definitely extend it on the monthly time frame according to the RSI. Not saying it can't go higher, but... I'm thinking there's a lid on it at around 140 because that's the uh, 2008 high, and um, probably you're going to find resistance there, especially if you, when you get the RSI up around. You know, if it keeps going here, it'll be up around 80, and very seldom. Well, actually, it's never got to 80, but you get up around 75 is getting late in the game. So, my opinion will probably hit 140 on crude, and and it's pretty much had a run straight up from the 2020 low to where we are right now. There is no base building or anything going on to, uh, to really say it's going to keep going here. So I don't, um, I think 140 is probably about it, that give or take a little bit, but I think that's going to find resistance. I'm not sure that's going to be any top of any consequences, just probably where we're heading. We're at 115 right now area. Uh, so I, I guess, on a short-term basis, we're probably still heading higher, but not a whole lot higher. So, well, we certainly had interesting action today with a uh, news report that there was going to be a whole lot more supply. It went down for all of about two hours before it popped right back up. So it's <laughs> not uh, acting like uh, the news headlines that would make it sound like it, it was going lower lasted all of two hours. So <clears throat> seems yeah. to, at least even in the short term, the the action seems to be not believing uh, that there's going to be a lot more supply, or I guess there's going to be a lot more demand, one of the two. But I have a feeling that it's more about supply than demand right at the moment. But, uh, yeah, so I, I remember the long-term highs are like 168 from back in like 12, 2006 or 2008 or so. Well, uh, on – I'm looking at light crude, so you might be looking at something else, but uh, I got the chart in front of me. It looks like, yeah, maybe 150, and that was 2008 up in that range, and, and it felt like a, a rocket uh, down. I mean, in one year, it dropped from you know 150 down to 40 <laughs> in one, well, from the, 2008, that, 2009. <laughs> yeah, it went down, yeah. straight down. The single so, biggest uh, trade in hi- the single biggest trade in history that made more money by a single individual. You know where it what in what uh, sector it was in. Well, I guess we're, since we're talking about oil, I assume oil. Natural gas. Natural gas. Yeah, guy uh, actually hit it at. Uh, he he had a lot of money, but he I think he ended up putting in a hundred million uh, short. On natural gas, when it was in uh, like uh, sixteen dollars and fifty cents, and rode it all the way down to a couple of bucks, but it uh, made him oh. it made him about a uh, billion and a half dollars, and it's still the single uh, biggest trade by an individual ever in the market. So, uh, as you say, if you can't bust it up, go bust it down. But uh, it's either heaven or hell in those markets. Wow, well, uh, he bet a hundred million dollars on it. So, and they ended up with like this morning uh, I made point, yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> ended up with uh, <laughs> like one, uh, one point five or one point six billion at the end of it. So anyway, wow. um, that, that's uh, interesting. Well, when people so, tell me that they don't make any money short, um, I say, well, it all depends on what you're shorting. <laughs> but uh, yeah. certainly, that's the biggest trade. Um, anyway, I uh, just thought that was interesting. So. Uh, We've got the bulls and bears here. Anything else on this chart uh, before we no, go to the it, next? No, it, it, it works pretty well. I mean, if you go back in history, you know, when it gets this low, you know, the shorts are, you know, late in the game, I guess you might say. You know, it's uh, and, and, you know, and like I said, you know, I, I post some of my material on stock charts 
Um, and when you get hate mail, you know, around it, oh, this time you're wrong, whatever, it's usually a real good sign that, you know, people take the time to write an email saying on how wrong I am and how convinced they are that the market's going to go down. And you really need conviction um, for the, the public to really, you know, have a sour taste in their mouth. And usually uh, they're, they're the ones that kind of get destroyed if they're so evidently. Um, it's a pretty good sign, I, I think. Sentiment just reached to a point where, uh, you know, the, down, the downside is done. You know, the bad news is out. Everybody hates the market. And so at least you're going to go sideways here at worst. Uh, if not go up, so and that's just uh, the sentiment alone. But you did again have a sign of strength off that low, uh, according to advanced decline lines and calling off square. So it's, it's quite a combination. You know how long the rally will last. I'm not sure. You know maybe I think this one could last maybe a couple three months. It's not like Are a day you, trader. Do you have anything. an upside target? Well, I'm thinking this pattern that's forming here is a. Uh, is the uh, three drives to a bottom pattern, and um, I said that a while back, even a month ago, and uh, it kind of looked like that. And so, if it is three drives to a top pattern, or three drives to a bottom pattern, uh, it has an upside target. This is on the SPY is around four sixty, um, which is decent from here. It's you know five hundred points higher, so it's a decent move up. And you, uh, you, I think that, that could be there. Then for force a 60 area on the SBY, I don't know. You know, and say that takes a month or two or, or even three to get there, um, then I think that run will be up. Uh, I think this whole year is not really going to be a down market. I think the whole year is going to be a sideways market. Um, well, when we come – So we'll when see. We come, yeah, when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about – uh, your original theories on the three-day weekends in the summer, uh, I talked a little bit about that. I've kind of found that it holds some water on it. But uh, when we come back, we'll talk to Tim a little bit more about that. In the meantime, uh, the S&P... We, 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 we got chart number three, too, so we'll save oh, time we for got, that. We've got another 10 minutes in the next segment, so we'll be there. Be fine. Anyway, uh, getting close to testing the high of the other day. 4160, so we only have about another seven or eight points uh, to go test that now. We'll be back in a Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, we're back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com, also the author of The Secret Science of Price and Volume, available on Amazon. Uh, we're sitting right around uh, just a few points uh, below this S&P high of uh, 41.68 as uh, we return to Tim Ord. Um, we were talking about that three-day weekend, then we'll get into chart three here from you. But uh, right. any thoughts on that again? Well, a lot of times when you go into holidays, you know, I kind of noticed on uh, July 4th seems to be, you know, uh, I don't know, just over the years, a lot of times if the market's going up and you start getting into a holiday period, a lot of traders take off early and the volume starts to drop out. Well, the volume's dropping out while the market's going up. That's a bearish sign. However, if the market's going down into a holiday, usually volume drops out, too, because traders take off early for the holiday. And the, if the market's going down, then volume's getting lighter going into that holiday. So a lot of times to the bottom. Now, this time around, you know, we had uh, a three-day week, Memorial weekend. And I thought, you know, we we're going to be either be a high or a low. Well, we actually had a decent volume going into um, last Friday. Uh, the volume really didn't drop off. It was pretty much steady all the way up. So um, that scenario didn't really work out. But if you go back and look at July 4th time frame uh, over the years, if you're going down, uh, a lot of times that, that particular time frame is a low. And if you're going up into July 4th time frame, a lot of times it's a high. And the reason why is the volume uh, drops out. Uh, so, uh, Sony, I just noticed that over years, so every time, you know, the next holiday we got now, it, actually we got Juneteenth, uh, isn't it? We got a Juneteenth coming up before the July 4th time frame. I, I think that's on a Monday, I think like June 24th, which is kind of, um, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it's, it's in the later part of June and it's not too far away from the July 4th holiday. So I'm not sure. Probably one of those two days will probably have a reversal in the market. I'll put it that way. I mean, at least on a short term basis. So, but you know, that's my theory um, around holidays. It's not so much the holiday itself is creating a, a turnaround. It depends what direction it's going into that holiday and what the volume is doing as it's going into that holiday. So, and it, it seems to work fairly well. So, um, you know, you got questions on it? No, I'm sitting here Googling uh, my next day off, I think, <laughs> if I, for, oh, yeah. I had forgotten about it. So I'm trying to figure yeah, out when June, Juneteenth, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's on a Monday. Um, yeah, I'm just June 19th. Okay. Is it June 19th it's, the holiday? It's actually on Sunday, so we don't get a day off. I was, when you said that, no, I was we, thinking. No, we get you, Monday off. We get Monday off. Oh, do we? Market's yep. closed on Monday? Okay. Yeah, Monday's market's closed on Monday, so it'll be the 20, June twentieth to be off. Well, you, you well, you got about another few days, and you got July fourth. So, 
Well, I was um, going to say, I'm looking uh, out here. So, options expirations on the 17th. Uh, Delta neutrals next, uh, next Weird Wally Wednesday is the 8th. So, yeah, you get through, at least through options expiration on that already. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah I don't know. I think this is the first, well, was, uh, Joe Biden created this holiday, so this is the first ever Juneteenth holiday ever. Uh, so for the market. I don't know what, yeah, for the market, but I don't know what that's really going to have a big effect on the market. July 4th, it usually does, because a lot of people, uh, that's more of a, oh, I don't know, celebrated, uh, I guess, celebrated um holiday so but july 4th you know a lot of times you'll, you'll see highs and lows around that time frame at least short term so um let's move on to the chart because I, I think this is kind of important here okay if you got to, got time but it's up, uh, ready this to go. chart yeah this chart is actually the top windows i really want to talk about and uh, bull mar- or, uh, uh, markets are really have symmetry in time which are um both price and time. And this this is a weekly chart, and the top chart is GLD, which is ETF for gold, and, and the chart goes back to basically mid-2010. And I drew this chart oh, several months ago, I mean, probably around January or something, and I shaded that area on is where I put the left shoulder, it's kind of a shaded pink area. And I said, well, that's about two years and if this market's going to hold symmetry, and I drew the chart, it says in June of two years. I drew this back in January. Well, we're obviously now in June, and those two time frames, in other words, the left shoulder in time is about equal to the right shoulder. Uh, so I thought that was kind of important. Then if you go down, uh, I didn't put the GDX for some reason. I got the GDXJ there. But at the same time, you got... Um, GDXJ hitting support around the 40 area and you go down to the bottom window which is the GDXJ to gold ratio it's also at a, a support area so you got kind of a uh, a three prong line up here you got time uh, pretty well uh, in an area where if it's going to happen this would probably be a good time and you got uh, GDXJ at uh, major support, and you got GDXJ, GLD at major support. And all three of them are, are kind of really lined up well. So if I had to make a guess here, I think that something important should happen right around here, uh, time-wise and price-wise. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to pass that on. So I'm thinking if something's going to happen here, uh, this would probably be the time to do it. So, and... Uh, so we'll see. You know, I guess a month from now we'll know if if this time frame was important or not. But everything seems to be lining up here pretty well. And usually summers, you know, spring and summers are not the ideal time uh, for the gold market. It seems like it's always in the fall or, um, or right after Christmas a lot of times. You, know. But we'll see how that works out. But, uh, and, you know, gold or GLD right now is is up a bunch is about four and a half percent. So, um, could be, could be an important move starting here is what I'm thinking. So, but, um, what else you want to talk about? Well, we're only about 30 seconds before the break here. Um, that's pretty much it. We're going to probably see you in another couple of weeks. Again, uh, we want to thank, uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle.com for being on there. Um, any other things you have in the next 10 or 15 seconds you want to get off your chest? Uh, no, I think the market's made an important low, and, and uh, I think uh, re- recently GDX and uh, the stock market's kind of halfway trading together. So I think one goes up, the other one will go up with it. So um, I think I see that happening here, too. So I'm bullish on both right now. Well, I want to thank uh, Tim for being on the line. We'll see him again in a couple of weeks. Thanks again, Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Right. Thank you.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return... To another great power trading hour, or the end of one, actually. Um, just looking at the volume, uh, kind of light. Uh, we're coming up to the previous high. It's probably going to be lighter volume. Fund buying is probably over today or tomorrow morning. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of a pullback into Friday's close as people get long and then uh, run for the exits come Friday afternoon, or at least a little bit. Um, options really have shown, as I said when I came back on Tuesday, were very tight. I didn't see a lot of movement uh, this week. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, if you're trading, you're probably trading on 5, 10, 15 minute charts, uh, not on the dailies. I look for bigger swings. Um, I had, you know, we had some decent winners in uh, the newsletter. We got out of them um, and more than willing to sit back and see if we get, uh, you know, maybe a pullback uh, that makes an ABC higher or maybe we get a signal here that says this is the top. But um, pretty tough to make a lot of predictions until the next couple of days go by. Uh, next Wednesday, of course, is uh Delta neutral day for options market makers. Uh, my work is a lot based on that. We'll know a lot more 
uh, next Wednesday about which way the market's going. Uh, I just have a very narrow but wide uh, expiration charts for tomorrow. And that just kind of tells me that, you know, anywhere from, you know, 4125 maybe to 4100. So we could have uh, give back what we got today and not go much lower. Uh, the question is just how long we kind of uh, chop around in this area of consolidation. But uh, that's pretty much it. Oil responded uh, to a story. It uh, gave it the raspberry. It's back higher. I think that's the big story of the day. So when you can, not when you have to, we shall return. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too...